Macaulay Culkin is the most popular young actor of the 20th century, who retired at the age of 14. Even adult actors dreamed of his fees. He gave joy to millions of viewers around the world. However, those days, Macaulay himself just wanted to feel like an ordinary child, at least for a moment. Today on The Biographer Channel, we are going to talk about the difficult fate of Macaulay Culkin, who was exploited by his father and lost his childhood. Why did Macaulay's career fail? Does he have a chance to return to the big cinema? And what tragic event pushed him on the path of alcoholism and drug addiction? Before we answer these questions, we suggest you click on the subscribe button and the bell to know all the most interesting facts about your favorite celebrities. Subscribe and let's start! Macaulay Carson Culkin was born on August 26, 1980 in New York. The boy was named after the writer Thomas Macaulay and frontiersman General Keith Carson. His parents are Christopher Culkin, a former Broadway actor, and Patricia Bentrap, a telephone operator. They were not married, but this did not prevent them from creating a large family. Macaulay became the third of seven children in the family. That's why the future actor knew perfectly well what the competition for parental attention was. This house is so full of people, it makes me sick. When I grow up and get married, I'm living alone. Did you hear me? The family of the future young star was not rich at all. His father worked as a caretaker at the church and could only pay for a small apartment on the Lower East Side in Manhattan, where all the family huddled together in one bedroom. As the actor later recalled, once he was even sent to pick up coins from the cinema floor, thereby getting at least some money. Macaulay's energy was overflowing. Not a day went by without tricks and inventions. Once, he almost gave his parents a heart attack by hiding in the closet for a long time. When the boy was four years old, on the advice of relatives, his parents sent him to a theater studio, where he began to study acting and choreography. Whether it was his genes, his father was a Broadway actor in his youth, or it was Macaulay's natural talent, but a year later he already played in his first productions, which were called The Big Squirrel and Bach Babies. The audience liked little Culkin so much that they gave him almost all the flowers and stuffed toys after the performance. As the actor later said, at that time, the stage seemed huge to him, and the boy was afraid that the audience wouldn't simply notice him. That's why Macaulay tried to shout from the stage as loudly as possible, and because of this fact, he differed from other young artists. Agents noticed him thanks to his bright and attractive behavior on stage, as well as his charm and cute appearance, and the boy began acting in advertising. In 1985, Macaulay already made his film debut in the movie The Midnight Hour, but it was a minor role, so the aspiring actor wasn't even mentioned in the credits. Then, he appeared in one of the episodes of the series The Equalizer, as well as the films Rocket Gibraltar and See You in the Morning. Macaulay even worked with Tom Cruise in Born on the Fourth of July, but in the process of editing, the shots with him were cut out. During the first five years of education, Culkin went to St. Joseph's Catholic School, but after he regularly started acting in movies, he moved to a specialized children's professional school created for child actors and musicians. In addition, Macaulay attended ballet school for some time. The first full-fledged film with the participation of Macaulay Culkin was Uncle Buck in 1989. There, the boy played one of the key roles. It's interesting that the lines of Macaulay's character in the interrogation scene were glued to Uncle Buck's head. That was done to maintain a fast pace of the filming process so the actor would not memorize but read his words. Do you have a house? Apartment. On a rent? Rent. What do you do for a living? Lots of things. Where's your office? I don't have one. How come? I don't need one. Culkin received a $40,000 royalty for playing the role of Miles. The film did not gain much popularity, but the young actor was noticed by John Hughes, a producer and screenwriter, who later invited him to star in the film Home Alone. Hello. Few people know, but the idea of the film came to Hughes just on the set of Uncle Buck. It dawned on him during a scene when Macaulay Culkin's character was talking with a potential nanny through a door crack. That's how a scene with robbers climbing into the house through the dog door appeared. After it, the whole subsequent story of the movie Home Alone was written. 
Despite the fact that Macaulay was the main contender for the role of Kevin, the director of the project, Chris Columbus, still decided to hold a casting just in case. But after listening to hundreds of children, he was convinced that no one could play this role better than Culkin. Macaulay's father, whose enterprise later played a cruel joke on him, also managed to get the participation of his youngest son, Kieran, in the film. He came up with a touching story about the strong attachment of two brothers. The producers had no choice but to give Kieran the role of Cousin Fuller. It was with him that Kevin did not want to sleep because he wet the bed. Fuller, go easy on the Pepsi. <laughs> The young actor really liked the filming process. By the way, the scene of the battle plans with the bandits, which Kevin used, was drawn by Culkin himself. He even got injured on the set. Do you remember the scene where Harry tries to bite off Kevin's finger? Joe Pesci wanted Macaulay Culkin to really be afraid of him. Therefore, the actor tried not to run into the boy on set, and at the mentioned moment, he really bit his finger. They say that you can still find the scar on Culkin's arm. First thing I'm going to do is bite off every one of these little fingers, one at a time. Finally, in 1990, on the eve of Christmas, the film Home Alone, which later would become iconic, was released. Macaulay literally woke up famous. The role of Kevin McAllister earned him a Young Actor Award and a Golden Globe nomination for Best Actor. The film quickly became a rental leader and even got into the Guinness Book of World Records as a comedy that grossed more than the others. The box office fees amounted to $553 million. Macaulay Culkin received a $100,000 royalty, which was an incredible amount for his family. Little Macaulay turned from an unknown boy into a star and lost his childhood forever. He presented the film on red carpets, gave endless interviews, and received new offers from directors. Culkin achieved what many aspiring actors had been dreaming about for years at the age of 10. He was too young to understand what the consequences would be. Seeing that a promising actor was growing up in the family, his father began to represent the interests of his son as a manager. My father was overbearing, very controlling. He was always the way he is, even before my success. He was not always a good person. He'd play mind games to make sure I knew my place. In addition to working on films, Macaulay Culkin, now known all over the world, continued to play in the theater. Tickets for his performances rose sharply in price and were sold for several months in advance. Offers began pouring in for the young star. In 1991, Macaulay appeared in a small role in the Chris Columbus comedy Only the Lonely. In the same year, the melodrama My Girl was released. There, Culkin played the main role, which brought the actor $1 million. We should say that it was that film where Macaulay's first on-screen kiss with the young Anna Klemski happened. The actors received for it an MTV award in the nomination for Best Kiss. That award did not correspond to their age, but who cared? Both children were only 11 years old at the time of filming. Um, uh, oh, I, it was like, stupid girl. Look at, yeah. look at. <laughs> I'm gonna, really? I'm gonna kiss a girl? Really? Uh, a little bit, yeah. yeah. I mean, we, we got along very well, but at the same time, it was also like, this is so embarrassing, you know, but, you know, you gotta do what you gotta do. Yeah. yeah. During the same period, Macaulay appeared in the clips Black or White and Jam by Michael Jackson. They became very good friends and spent a lot of time together. The actor believed that a star like Jackson got close to him because he himself had gone through it and understood the feelings of a child who had fallen into fame. In addition, Macaulay treated Michael as an ordinary person, not a celebrity. Culkin, along with Elizabeth Taylor, baptized Jackson's only daughter, Paris. By the way, Macaulay and Paris have a strange hobby. They like to take spoons from cafes, restaurants, airplanes, and exchange them with each other. When the trial of Michael Jackson on the corruption of minors took place in 2005, Macaulay Culkin spoke at it as a witness in defense of Jackson saying that he often visited him at the age of under 14 and the singer did not harass him. When Macaulay was 11 years old, he was honored to become the host of the popular show Saturday Night Live. He became the second youngest star of the project. The first was Drew Barrymore. The success of the Kevin McAllister story led to the release of the sequel Home Alone 2 Lost in New York. As the director of the movie said, Although he tried to bring something new to the film, it still turned out to be a remake of the first part. 
This did not prevent viewers from falling in love with Home Alone 2 and re-watching it with pleasure. Here is an interesting fact. In the scene at the hotel, the passerby who helps Kevin is Donald Trump himself. At that time, he was the owner of this hotel. For filming, a rug was removed from the lobby so that Culkin's character could slide on the floor. When the shooting was over, Trump did not return the carpet. Perhaps he enjoyed watching the guests fall, but he claims that he liked this episode of the film so much that he even forbade repairing the floor on the hotel in order to preserve the spirit of the film. Home Alone 2 was released in 1992 and almost repeated the success of the first part. Although it did not break the record of the first film, it earned more than $300 million at the box office. For the role of Kevin, the talented actor got $4.5 million. The audience expected to see Macaulay Culkin exclusively in roles similar to Kevin McAllister, the main character of the sensational dialogy. However, a year later, in the drama The Good Son, the charming actor appeared in a completely different role. He played a sociopathic boy, even ready to commit a crime for the sake of pleasure. Although the movie paid off and Culkin received $5 million for the role, The Good Son was negatively received by critics. While The Sun starred in movies, visited the inauguration of Bill Clinton, and basked in the glory, Dad received money for him. The demands of Culkin Sr. grew rapidly. He was only interested in money, not in the quality of scripts. He constantly increased fees and sometimes went too far. In 1993, while working on the fairy tale The Nutcracker, Macaulay's father opposed Kevin Klein, who was supposed to read voiceover text. Christopher demanded to remove him, otherwise his son would not take part in the advertising campaign of the movie. The producer first met him halfway, but after getting a number of other demands from the father, he returned the text. Macaulay grew rapidly. That is why tall actors were especially selected for him for adult roles, so that the main character would seem shorter against their background. Released in 1994, the comedy Getting Even With Dad received unflattering reviews from critics. However, Christopher Culkin was pleased. His son earned as much as $8 million for his work in the film. Macaulay became the first child actor in history to get such a big sum for a role. Macaulay repeatedly asked his father to take a break from work, but Christopher didn't want to stop. I really did what I wanted to do. I enjoyed the filming process. It was easy to work with the first three or four films, especially since none of my friends had ever done it. But then I began to get tired. I wanted to go back to school, but I no longer belonged to myself. Now my father was in charge of everything. After that, The Page Master was released on the screens, and although the role of Richard Tyler was similar to the image of the houseboy familiar to viewers, the picture did not receive high reviews. Nevertheless, let's admit it, when we were kids, many of us enjoyed watching films with Macaulay, and we did not even suspect that the critics gave them low ratings. How about you? Have you watched other films with our hero besides Home Alone, and did you like them? Be sure to share your opinion in the comments. The final stage in Culkin's childhood career was the comedy film Richie Rich. He was already 14 years old at the time of filming. Because of it, he looked comically in the image of a spoiled brat. In 1995, Macaulay received three nominations for the Golden Raspberry Anti-Award for his roles in the films Getting Even With Dad, Richie Rich, and The Page Master. Just imagine the child's condition. He was already pretty tired of filming, and suddenly, at such an early age, he received the main actor's anti-award. Macaulay felt like a money-making machine and just wanted to go to school. His mother, Patricia, took his side and asked him not to take part in filming of movies at all. However, Macaulay's father insisted on continuing his career. Christopher Culkin, in an effort to establish a family business, tried to pull his younger children to the film industry. One of the main conditions when signing contracts with film companies was the participation of the filming of Macaulay's brother and sister. It is interesting that only Kieran and Rory Culkin were able to continue acting in films afterwards. The newspapers called it the Culkin clan's attack on Hollywood. However, this attack ended with the complete defeat of the family. Kit's increasing requests led to the fact that no company wanted to deal with Macaulay. They stopped inviting him to the movies. Macaulay took a break, and his parents, tired of endless quarrels, decided to part. For several years, they had been engaged in the division of children and money in court. All this by itself also had a very negative impact on the emotional state of the young star. 
In 1997, the court finally gave Patricia custody of her children, but Macaulay's fees were given to the personal accountant of the young actor. Mother Patricia Bentrap tearfully begged her son never to act in movies again. She was throwing tantrums, and he had to make that promise. Anyway, Macaulay no longer played in children's films. As a child, I didn't have a chance to be a child. I retired at the age of 14. For a long time, Macaulay had not been filmed anywhere, although he was even offered the role of Jack Dawson in Titanic. He decided to devote himself to education and live a normal life. In 1998, the actor appeared in the video clip Sunday, created by the rock band Sonic Youth. In the same year, Macaulay Culkin married actress Rachel Miner. She was his former classmate. However, the relationship did not last long. Unfortunately, the couple broke up in 2000 and two years later issued an official divorce. On top of it, Macaulay also had serious problems with his parents. His father, obsessed with money, didn't stop litigation, and his mother, who could not stand the popularity of her sons, fell into neurasthenia. Trying to restart his career, Macaulay made his debut on the London stage in the play Madame Melville. In 2003, he appeared on the big screens again. The matured Culkin chose a movie for a long time to return to the film industry after a long break. The tragic comedy Party Monster became a chance for Macaulay to prove to everyone and himself that he was an actor capable of playing a serious role. In the film, he played Michael Eilig. He is the infamous New York club promoter. During the preparation for the role, Culkin came to prison and talked to the real Michael Eilig, the prototype of his character. Also, Macaulay went to a strip club where he ordered 20 private dancers with different strippers. The room was flooded with champagne at $350 per bottle. That's how Culkin got used to the role of a club monster. Preparation, however, did not affect the success of the picture. The film received mostly negative reviews. The Chicago Sun-Times called Culkin's performance fearless. The review noted that the movie lacked insight and left us feeling sad and empty. Sad for ourselves, not Alec. And maybe it had to be that way. That's what Macaulay said about his participation in independent cinema. First of all, I want to make films that are interesting to me. In this matter, I am very picky. You know, big budget or box office movies are the last thing I care about. Good material and talented people are much more important. The next comedy drama, Saved, also did not return the former glory to the actor. In 2003, Culkin started dating aspiring actress Mila Kunis. The affair lasted more than eight years. It was often discussed in the media, especially when Mila's career went uphill. There was even talk of a wedding. The lovers didn't try to hide their relations, appearing together on red carpets and posing for photographers. Mila called Macaulay her only one. Kunis seemed to breathe life into Macaulay. He began to go public again and act in films. Together with Kunis, Macaulay took part in the voiceover of the series Robot Chicken. In 2006, the actor released an experimental, almost autobiographical novel called Junior. Well, they say he regrets it now. Culkin's next project was the film Sex and Breakfast, in which Culkin played one of the main roles. In 2008, a terrible tragedy occurred that hit Macaulay hard. His sister Dakota was hit by a car and died. The girl was only 29 years old. This event served as the first real push for Macaulay towards various addictions. At first, he held up well. In 2009, the actor starred in several episodes of the fantasy series Kings. In 2011, there was another difficult event for Macaulay. He and Mila Kunis broke up. According to official information, the couple separated peacefully and the actors remained friends. Mila later said that she did not marry Macaulay because, firstly, she did not believe in the institution of marriage, and secondly, she felt uncomfortable next to a person whose fans fell into a stupor seeing Macaulay on the streets. She simply did not know how to react. Breaking up with a girl he had been dating for almost seven years was a heavy blow for Culkin. Macaulay lost weight, stopped getting a haircut, and wore dirty, baggy clothes. News about his addiction to alcohol and drugs constantly appeared in the press. They stated that he spent $6,000 a month on it. 
The actor himself denied taking drugs, although he was previously arrested for possession of marijuana. McCulley said he could smoke 60 cigarettes a day, but nothing more. There was news about the actor's unsuccessful suicide attempt due to depression, which continued after the death of his sister Dakota and worsened by the breakup with Kunis. McCulley abandoned cinema again, and in order to somehow occupy his leisure time, in 2013 he created the group The Pizza Underground, which recorded covers of compositions by another rock band, The Velvet Underground. During the first tour, the band's appearance on stage in Nottingham lasted 15 minutes. After that, the band was booed. However, for some time, they even toured America and Europe. In 2016, the band broke up. For some time, Macaulay was engaged in DJing and was almost an assistant on tour for Har Mar Superstar and Adam Green, the founder of the band Moldy Peaches. It was speculated in the media that the actor had short affairs with model Agatha Relota and actress Irene Lopez. Culkin had a serious affair with a participant of the series All My Children, Jordan Lane Price, and even planned a wedding. It was rumored that the actor wanted to get back with Mila, who just as quickly found comfort with Ashton Kutcher. However, it never came to the wedding. Gradually, Macaulay began to return to normal life. At some point, he pulled himself together, changed his hairstyle, put on weight, and started speaking again. Contrary to popular belief, I have never been treated for drug addiction. I haven't been in jail, I've only been arrested once, and in general, I try my best to avoid stereotypes associated with former star children. In 2016, he played the role of the legendary musician Kurt Cobain, crucified in the video Total Entertainment Forever, which was recorded by singer Josh Tillman known as Father John Misty. In the same year, Macaulay appeared in another Adam Green picture, a low-budget psychedelic story of Adam Green's Aladdin. Next project was the TV series Drivers. After that was the commercial for the insurance company Compare the Market. By the way, Macaulay was offered three times to play a role in the TV series The Big Bang Theory, but he refused. Later, he admitted that it would have brought a lot of money but the banal scenario, according to him, was not worth it. In 2017, Culkin agreed to take part in the film Changeland, which became the directorial debut for actor Seth Green. McCulley met Brenda Song on the set. They had an affair, which the couple hid from the eyes of the curious media for a long time. This relationship literally brought the actor back to life and gave push to the restart of his career. Macaulay starred in several TV shows and commercials. In 2018, he started an Instagram account and began shooting his own YouTube show, Bunny Ears. One day, the actor did a vote on his Twitter account about the second name. The winning option was Macaulay Culkin. It was planned that he would now officially bear the name Macaulay Macaulay Culkin Culkin, but the actor said that it was a joke. At the same time, Culkin became the producer of the computer game Toe Jam and Earl, Back in the Groove. It's interesting that Macaulay created the meme with Ryan Gosling. Once paparazzi captured Gosling in a t-shirt with Culkin as a child, the actor decided to answer this and made himself a t-shirt with a photo of Gosling. It became a long-running meme. In 2021, Culkin appeared in the 10th season of American Horror Story, and I must say that he quite organically fit into the cast. It is known that the actor suffers from agoraphobia. This is a fear of open space. In an interview with Larry King, he said that his condition worsened after the incident when a crowd of his fans began to rock his trailer on the set. The actor added that a walk with a dog helped him a lot to fight his mental disorder. Now, Macaulay Culkin lives quite an idle life. His capital is $18 million. This is earnings from filming, his website, and podcast Bunny Ears, as well as royalties for taking part in old movies. In addition, he owns real estate that brings him income. He has a house in Los Angeles, also an apartment in New York on Broadway, although he prefers to live in Paris. On April 5, 2021, he and Brenda Song had a son, Dakota Song Culkin. 
He named his son Dakota after the sister who tragically died. Macaulay had not communicated with his father for more than 25 years, claiming that he never loved him and mercilessly exploited him. A few years ago, Culkin Sr. had a heart attack, but the actor chose not to react to it in any way. Later, Christopher Culkin himself stated that he no longer considers Macaulay his son. Macaulay Culkin is the hero of our childhood, who went through a difficult path. It is a joy to see that he has got a family and is enjoying life. Who knows if he will appear on the big screens again, but in any case, we will always be grateful to him for the role of Kevin McAllister in the cult classic Home Alone. After all, no matter how many remakes of this cult film are made in the future, they will never surpass the first two parts. Click on the icons that appeared on your screen to learn about the world of cinema and the life of celebrities that most viewers don't know. Watch our other videos and have fun. Believe me, they are worth your attention.